Hey guys, so guys, welcome to another video of Maxi Aspie, and today I am celebrating over five years clear of my last epileptic fit. Obviously, at the time being diagnosed with epilepsy was quite harsh news. My first fit, I couldn't even be diagnosed with epilepsy, as anyone can have one fit, and I was told at the time that everybody can have one, and then you might never have one again. My mum made the wise decision, in hindsight, the very wise decision to tell me that I couldn't drive for two years, when in reality it was only six months. But mother's intuition kicked in, and thank God it did, because it was coming up to two years, and I then had another fit at work. My first fit happened when I was at college. Maybe it was stress, maybe it was the ADHD medicine I was taking, because at the time they said that could lower the threshold of you having a fit. But my first fit was I was playing on a video game, I got a bit stressed, a bit angry at it, and then I ended up having an epileptic fit. With my mum and dad downstairs thinking it was just me banging and being angry at a game, like normal, that would normally happen. And you know, they didn't realise for, they didn't realise instantly what was going on until my mum felt there was something not right. And then at that point they saw me having a fit in my room. So fast forward to two years later, I'm at work. I remember specifically my desk was moved that day. Don't ask me why, I just remember that. Maybe that's the autism in, in me. You know, and I remember having, getting up, going for some water, and then suddenly I remember waking up with all these people around me. I, and I knew instantly I'd had another fit. Fast forward to that, I mean, it was no longer than a week later. I went back to work very quickly. I wanted to, they didn't force me. And then I ended up having I think two fits in one week, three fits in one week. And then it was at that point I realised, especially I then had my last fit, which was over five years ago, I had in the shower and I somehow made myself get upstairs, which I still don't know how I did to this day. And it was at that point I realised I had to go on medicine. And touch wood, I've not had a fit for over five years. And it's been... A massive journey but I wanted to give some tips to people who have just been diagnosed and also when you see somebody having a fit what to do. The quick tips I would give is never give them water, their body can't digest it and unfortunately that's what my dad did to me, he tried to give me water straight away and I was just trying to throw up. Your body can't digest it. Water you'd normally think is the first thing to do, actually it's probably not. The second tip is don't believe the myth about them being able to swallow their tongue. Do not put your finger fingers in their throat. They will bite your fingers off. They don't, won't mean to, but that's what the body is doing at the time. Number three, you'll be extremely tired because literally having a fit is the equivalent of running a marathon. That's what all your muscles and all your body is doing at that time. It's a lot for the body to cope with. Another tip would be, you know, don't hold them down. You'll end up actually hurting them more. And that's happened to me. People have tried to hold me down. Don't do that. That's actually going to make them pull the shoulder out of their joint or whatever, you know, it's going to hurt them. In terms of diagnosis, what I would say as well is at least you now know what your diagnosis is. A lot of people could go years and months and and weeks without knowing what, what condition they've got. So the, the first step to actually being able to help and support you is to get that diagnosis. So even though that diagnosis might be really sad at the time which it was for me which was heartbreaking to find out I then had this other condition and it could get worse it was actually really important for me to know what I had so I could get help with it and hopefully there's doctors and professionals that can get you the help and and the support that you need and it's something that I will continue to campaign for until people do get the right support and help that they need but obviously as much as you can, don't let it get you down, don't let it get you sad because that will just cause more and more issues and you don't want that. You've got enough as it is, let alone being sad and possibly depressed and all the other things that come with it. But I just wanted this to be more of a epilepsy awareness video because these conditions aren't visible. You know, we could walk past 10, 20, 30, 40 people a day and they could may be epileptic, they may be autistic. And we don't we don't look at that. So I, I always say just bear in mind that somebody might be going through something and you could be looking at someone like me that's not uh, touch wood had an epileptic fit for over five years. 
but you may look at me and go, well, he's fine, you know, he's, he's cool and he can handle this and he can handle that. Just be more aware, be more compassionate and just don't assume, don't assume that everybody's fine and, you know, we often do, you know, we often say, you're okay, you're okay and people go, yeah, and they say it without even thinking about it. Just be more compassionate and that would be my takeaway from me being clear from epilepsy for five years is just be compassionate so guys thank you for watching i hope this video helped and guys thank you for watching take care and goodbye for now